I recently watched the movie Interstellar, and I was struck by the image of a black hole with huge rings of light. I thought this was cool, but not very realistic. Black holes don't produce light. They don't let anything escape at all. Or do they? It turns out that black holes do produce something. This is called Hawking radiation, named after Stephen Hawking, who theorized it. But how could a black hole make anything? Before we answer this question, we have to figure out what a black hole even is. It's not actually a hole, as the name implies. In reality, a black hole is a very, 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 very tiny speck of stuff from a dead star. However, that stuff is as heavy as the entire star by itself. That makes the gravity around the stuff ultra strong, strong enough to suck in even light if it's close enough. The closest something can be without getting sucked into a black hole is called the event horizon. Objects inside the event horizon are always sucked in, and objects outside it may either orbit or escape. The area beyond the event horizon is what's called a perfect vacuum. And no, that doesn't mean your mom's favorite Kirby she keeps in the closet. This actually means an area with absolutely nothing in it at all. It's impossible for a perfect vacuum to exist for long, though. So if something does not come into the black hole, it will spur the creation of what is called a particle-antiparticle pair. Imagine a box of sand. Normally, all the sand is at rest and even. This is like the perfect vacuum. However, if a ridge of sand were to move up above the rest of the sand, it would no longer occupy the place it had previously been. Sand cannot be created or destroyed, so a hole is left in the sand below. For this instant, the sand acts like a particle-antiparticle pair. The ridge above the rest is positive relative to the rest of the sand, and the hole is negative. However, as anybody who's ever played in a sandbox knows, the sand does not stay the same for long, and quickly falls back into the negative hole. Now the sand looks no different than if it, nothing had happened, and new ridges can form. This is the same thing that happens around a black hole. The neutral nothing is torn apart into positive and negative particles. The negative particle is a hole in space, which a corresponding particle fits perfectly into, like pegs in a pegboard. Normally, these particles are attracted to each other strongly, and almost instantly find each other and disappear. However, around a black hole, there are more forces involved. First, there is a force that attracts all things together. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's called gravity. Gravity is a very weak force, though. Even simple magnetoids are stronger. The force that attracts the positive and negative particles together is much, much stronger. Now, these particles are attracted to each other because they have opposite energy. But black holes also have positive energy. This means that the antiparticle is attracted to the black hole as well. Just like the hole in the sand was the same size as the sand that fits in it, negative particles have been shown to have the same mass as their particle partners. So gravity also attracts a negative particle to the great mass of the black hole. Together, these factors mean that a black hole more strongly attracts negative particles to it than it does positive particles. We can illustrate this by drawing a new event horizon that acts only on negative particles. All positive ones can still escape as long as they are outside the original event horizon. Let's draw on some particles and see what happens. First, most particles outside both horizons escape. Then, most positive particles outside the original horizon escape, but the negative ones are sucked in. Lastly, all particles inside the original horizon are sucked in. So where does this leave us? Well, everything inside the original event horizon is gone, no matter what it is. Inside the second event horizon, only positive escapes, and outside both, everything has a chance to escape. This means that overall, there are more positive particles escaping the black hole than negative ones. Now, just because there are new particles created doesn't mean there's more total stuff. There are a number of ways of looking at this, but I think the easiest explanation is that one of the black hole's particles is consumed by the antiparticle instead of the new particle that was created and should have been consumed. As more new stuff escapes the black hole, it gets smaller and smaller, and one day may disappear. So I guess the movie didn't get it too wrong. They just overlooked science a bit to make a cool-looking movie, which is their job.